Well, John, you guys are talking about keeping up with the racetrack. Why? Because Charlotte Motor Speedway is one of the most temperamental racetracks that we go to. And talking with a lot of these teams, they said the key is getting a setup on your race car that's going to work for both the daytime and the nighttime, not one that is tailored towards one or the other. So during the day, it's hot. The sun is out. The grip levels are really low on that racetrack. Then as the night starts to come in, the sun setting, the temperature goes down, grip levels, they go up. Now we are starting to get some cloud coverage coming into Charlotte Motor Speedway now, but that does put a lot on the crew chief's plates as they make their adjustments, as they make their calls all race long on top of the pit box for 600 miles. Guys, yeah, one rider coming into this 250 main event with a lot of momentum, Jordan Smith. He's won the last two East Division events back to back. Talked with him earlier today. He said, going into this season, I don't think a lot of people labeled me as a championship contender, but right now he's second in the points, two races remaining. Let's see what Ricky's got. Since you guys have been talking about drivers in the field who've never raced here in a truck, and Brett Moffitt would be one of them. Almost two hours of practice yesterday. You feel like you got pretty acclimated to this racetrack in the truck? Yeah, it's definitely a different game um, going to the truck. Welcome back to Monster Energy Supercross coverage from MetLife Stadium here on Fox, where the 250 main event has just concluded, and Zach Osborne is the winner. Uh, Zach, how aggressive did you have to race your way through the field to get up here and, and claim the top spot? Uh, it was a pretty tight track tonight. Like, all the ruts were getting so, so far down the track. Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of Off Track, where we truthfully are off track. I'm Kayla Mincy alongside my co-host, Daryl Mott, so glad you guys are joining us on this Wednesday afternoon, live from the red carpet for the Catwalk for a Cause. This is exciting. This is a cool event, a lot of people. Right, so Martin Trucks Jr. and Sherry Pollux uh, love to honor children. Basically, they pick 15 heroes, uh, which are children who are battling a cancer diagnosis or have already overcome it. Those are the individuals who will be walking the runway tonight. It's a fashion show, but for a good cause. The proceeds are going to both childhood and ovarian cancer. So. Very cool efforts by them. It, it is. Taking a look at Christopher Bell at the bottom of your screen. He has a winning truck underneath him. He won with this truck at Atlanta earlier in the year. He says it's getting a little free as the nighttime came and the sun went down. So they're making a chassis adjustment. Also putting some right side tires on right now, guys. See a little bit of yeah, Matt just said on the radio, well, it's too free if you didn't notice. It's very <laughs> unpredictable. So Crew Chief Junior Joyner saying we'll bring down pit road, put some scuffed tires on it, has about 12 to 13 laps on those tires. I, I like that. I just don't like that long slide at 170. Chase Briscoe in the middle of your screen talking with his crew chief. He said Chase is such a student of the sport, very invested in his career in the truck series, always studying, looking, and learning. Right now he's saying his truck is starting to tighten up a little bit. They're making some adjustments to loosen it for him. Ben Rhodes at the bottom of your screen also saying that his truck is also too tight on the long run go ahead and make it four tires for the 27. victory lane and kyle bush is climbing out of that winning 51 truck has once again found victory lane here at charlotte motor speedway for a seventh time and it was a great day overall for Kyle Busch Motorsports with Christopher Bell also in the top five. How does that kind of validate all the efforts at your organization and with these trucks? Uh, it means a lot. These guys, they uh, they pour their hearts and souls into our trucks and what we do with our Toyota Tundras. And uh, this Wednesday, Caitlin Vinci, good to have you here. Thank you for having me. And, and the wall kind of gives it away. It's time it for Women in Wheels. I love this segment. So many great ladies in the garage. Who are we talking about today? Well, there's a name that's been in the news a lot lately, the Earnhardt family. And this is a member of that family. Kelly Earnhardt Miller sat down with us. Does a great job at Junior Motorsports. So I've got to know when you visited with her, was it before or after Dale made his big announcement? It was actually a week after we have now learned that Dale Jr. went to Mr. Hendrick to let him know he was going to be, in fact, retiring. So I imagine Kelly was privately working with Dale through that decision, but she still took some time to sit down with us at her home to talk about Junior Motorsports and the expansion they had this season. Well, you're at your home, but normally you are very busy at the race shop, Junior Motorsports, and it's been a good year for you guys so far. Yeah, Junior Motorsports, our teams, we're um, off to a great start and uh, really excited about that. And the expansion this year, sometimes there's some growing pains that can come with that for a race team. Do you feel like you guys have experienced that at, at all, or has it been pretty, pretty easy? <laughs> no, I think we have. Last year, we said we had just a really good year with the crew chiefs. and our It's very fun-oriented in general. How did that attitude kind of come about uh, for the whole business? Yeah, sometimes I worry about our productivity. <laughs> <laughs> but um, happy employees and having fun is, is what it should Start be like. At you know? the beginning with you guys, kind of walk me through 
what it was like when you were trying to get pregnant, just that whole experience for both of you. In the beginning, it's super exciting. You know, you're entering that next chapter of your life. You're going to start a family. And I imagine you learn a lot about your partner through an experience like this. You do, um, you know, especially just through the challenging times and the, and the disappointing times. You know, there's she was mad and upset and might have taken it out on me a couple times.